Um, what I'm going to do now is do a very short uh, introduction of the whole uh, theme of uh, open data. Um, the guys who were already uh, on the web Monday yesterday might recognize the slides. <laughs> um, uh, they, I would call them uh, the same <laughs> or very similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's just a really short introduction. I'm gonna, gonna jump over uh, some of the things um, uh, just so we can really start going uh, deeper into the things that are really interesting from uh, Robert and Marcus. All right, so first off, let's start with a little story. This is um, a, little, a small family and they s are searching for a new apartment and their son Michael has asthma. And so they want to know what um, the particle pollution in uh, Nuremberg is and uh, which areas have the least particle pollution and how uh, crimi uh, criminal rates are, how the schools in certain districts are and so forth. So they have a few uh, needs to, uh, to address to find out about where they want to move. Um, so, there's these very, very interesting stations uh, around Nuremberg and uh, actually around uh, Bavaria, Bavaria overall, and they actually um, test uh, the air all the time, and this data is collected and uh, can then be used um, to know where the least particle pollution would be uh, in the city. Right now, this data is available, yes, but unfortunately, it's not easily uh, read out by an application. It's not easily uh, read out through machine-to-machine -machine communication. Um, so, for example, um, if we look at this, what is kind of the goal? Unfortunately, this text is all in German. <laughs> um, so, what ba basically a city might try to do is give um, their citizens um, a easy way to uh, integrate the data that they um, they are already producing into um, into different applications so uh, that it can more easily um, be used and um, more easily uh, interacted with so um, for example Immovelt who knows Immovelt Yes, nice <laughs> local companies. So, um, so for example, Immobile could use that data to show alongside uh, any search you do how the pollution would be uh, with a certain apartment and so forth. So this would be uh, one application. So what is then open data? Open data is basically um, a open licenses with the data. You can use the data uh, that you're getting um, quite easily. The second thing would be that the this data is available and um, readable through machines. This is the best way to, to then interact with it with different applications and so forth. That's the easiest way and basically you can work with this data later on without violating anything. And there we come to, to the next page because, well, when it comes to data, we Germans are a very particular, you know, so um, basically what we normally don't do, um, all this data is perfectly anonymous. Um, uh, there's no security relevant data, that's very important. Um, and all the data is uh, basically available um, and uh, not bound by any copyright or anything like that, because if it's bound by any copyright, you're not allowed to uh, use this data then. All right, so where does all the data come from? Mainly it comes from um, uh, cities, from uh, the German state, or basically any state in the world, uh, or uh, Bavaria, for example, and also nonprofit organizations. Interesting thing is that um, all these officials are already collecting data um, that citizens paid for beca because it's, it's actually needed and sometimes even has to be done by law. Um, so this data is already there and is even in some cases has to be available to uh, every citizens by, uh, citizen by law. And so 
there's huge amounts of data uh, everywhere produced about pollution in, in the air, in water, and all these different things um, that we have. Well, what's the problem normally with data? I think we know, we know that it's very often quite boring and lots of data, lots of crazy stuff going on there. And where it gets really interesting is basically uh, when it's put into an actual environment, uh, when you put together different sets of data um, to make sense of it and put it into the, the environment uh, it belongs to. And if you visualize it in a, a really easily understandable way, for us human beings, because we just don't work in uh, sets of numbers. We work uh, most often in visualizations. That's just much easier for us. Okay, I'm gonna uh, go over this. Just a few short examples about this. Um, one really nice example is that in the UK, um, one project visualized um, the rate of survival uh, of heart surgery, and the interesting thing after this was published, um, the rate of survival of heart surgery went up. Uh, interesting um, combination there, and uh, it probably you could, you could think about different reasons that, uh, that happening. Probably people were more aware of what was going on in the hospitals and started to uh, raise quality. Um, let's go over this. And this is also a really, really interesting um, example. Um, Brazil, lots of corruption. We will see how they uh, deal with the many challenges they have through, uh, throughout the World Cup and the Olympics and everything. Um, but what they actually did is, right now, um, they open up um, any um, money they spend um, after 24 hours. They sh show it. Uh, to all their citizens, okay, uh, 24 hours after they spent the money, uh, they have to transparently show it to them. And so they try to build uh, trust uh, back into the system. And all this data that, that you have done can be used for different analysis, can be used in, could be used in different applications. Um, let's go already back to something here in Nuremberg. Um, this is a map of um, basically how loud it is in certain areas, at which times, whether it's at night or uh, during the day, whether it's just from, from the street itself or whether it's from a uh, tram or subway uh, going through this. And you can see here which areas are the loudest, which are uh, pretty quiet. And uh, this is already available. This map is available. What it unfortunately isn't, that's why the example is uh, in brackets here, it's uh, unfortunately not available through an, any API uh, or any way to get it out of the system and use it in an application uh, and, and go further with it. So basically what might be um, the possibilities and the advantages uh, of open data? Number one, we just have more knowledge available to us, and that can help us make better decisions in different uh, situations. Um, the second thing that's uh, quite interesting, we have seen that over the last uh, decade, I would say, um, innovation is very much spurred by connecting uh, knowledge throughout the world, and uh, the more knowledge we have available and the more knowledge we can use uh, uh, easier, um, spurs uh, faster development. And that's basically uh, where this comes in. We have seen that in the last deca decade, basically from the internet itself, and then from web 2.0, where we have more connections, higher rates of communication, and so forth. And the third is we have a lot more possibilities to, diff to do different services that are not available right now. Through combination of different data sources, uh, new services might arise that we are not even thinking about right now because the data is not easily uh, available. All right, and that's uh, basically um, the last <laughs> page. That's where we are today.